In the dream, as always, I was watching the river and all the ripples and ebbs and curves and bubbles and plops, and everything was fine. Everything felt fine, but then I noticed that I wasn't hearing anything, and then I began to worry. My heart started beating, faster, faster. I wanted to run. I didn't know why, but I knew something was wrong. I became very excited, and then I looked down the river and I saw the body, clad in pink, floating along. I tried to get up, but couldn't. I tried to move, but couldn't. I strained, gasped for air, and collapsed in the snow as I lunged ahead, unable to do anything. I screamed as I watched the body float away. I screamed as it disappeared over the cliff. I screamed. And then I woke up covered in sweat, reassuring myself that it was only a dream. Only a dream. In the real world, I wandered along with three others, three escapees, three escapees from the compound. I wandered along the barren landscapes with them. Have hope, we'll find others out here, I tell my cohorts. As we shovel down our breakfast of canned beans and canned tuna, the only food one can find out here. You see, it wasn't always like this. The world used to be different. Before the compounds, people used to be able to grow stuff to live out in the world. But after the environment became unstable, after the air became too toxic to breathe and the land too polluted to be able to grow anything, we shut ourselves off and we became soft and stupid. And, well, the world changed. It evolved without us. Michael asks as he grabs a can of tuna, Are you sure that's safe to eat? That stuff's got to be at least a hundred years old. I tell him we don't have a choice. The ground is full of phosphorus and lithium. Any animals, any fruit out here could be fatal. There's got to be another way, Michael says. I don't say anything. We all eat quietly, dutifully. The food doesn't taste like much, but it's all we have. Then we trudge along. We don't really talk much. I think it has to do with our upbringing. In complete isolation, in complete dependence. We all know we have to work together, and we try to make light of things, and live together happily, but we're not really sure how to do that. And, as a result, we're less like friends than acquaintances. Despite breaking out of the compound together, and despite eating together for five months, doing everything together for five months, despite sharing everything we are, and have, it's like we live on different planets. But I guess that's just the way of things. Let's go this way, I motion. Following the river. No. We need to go north, Michael says. The river is important. What's up north? I ask. Michael doesn't say anything. He just fumes, annoyed, but grudgingly agrees. I'm not sure why, but, but he does. We follow the river, trudging along its banks. I know we're headed somewhere, but none of us are sure where. As we walk, I dream. Not only at night, but during the day, too. And it's always about the river, always the river, the dream, the river. The body floating downstream, and how I can't move, how I'm too late, how nothing can be done. And I always wake up startled in a cold sweat, and I always reassure myself that it was only a dream, that it wasn't real. Day after day, we trudge along. After five months, we have settled into a depressing rhythm of eating, walking, sleeping, eating, walking, sleeping, eating, walking, sleeping. The air is starting to get cold, and the leaves are starting to fall, but, but we, and we don't know how long we have until the frost comes. But when they do come, we'll likely die if we don't find a safer place to stay. I don't know why Michael, Sam, and James all follow me, but they seem to have confidence that I know the way. I don't say anything, but I'm pretty, wor but I'm starting to worry that we're not going to make it in time. Sometimes at night, I try to play music to cheer the guys up, but usually I can't think of much to play or much to talk about, and so at night we're usually just as quiet as we are during the day. We set up our tarps and sleeping bags, and we sleep fitfully underneath the dark sky, under still unsure about all the sounds, the screeches, and the stumblings that we hear out in the darkness, and still living in our own private nightmares. One night I asked my mates, what do you think we're going to find at the end of the river? They laugh, they don't really want to answer. I'm serious, I tell them, I want to know. Hopefully 
Hopefully something besides canned crap to eat, Michael says. The others don't say much. We just hope there are other survivors there. Where? I ask. At the city, you idiot, Michael says. I'm starting to wonder if we will ever find something better. We'll wander alone, Michael says. This is enough talk for now. Let's get some rest. He douses the fire and we all fall into our fitful sleeps. I dream again. I wake up, not in a sweat, but in surprise. In deep thought and contemplation. What if the dreams are real? I look at my mates. It would explain why they trust me. And maybe they know something I don't. I try to think, but the more I try to remember the details of my life, of the river, or the memory that might be associated with it, the less I can come up with. I don't say anything as we quietly eat breakfast, and as we quietly start trudging along. We've passed a thousand tree trunks, maybe a million stones, as we walk these five months, but something's different today. This is it, I say. This is my dream. Michael looks back. Are you sure? I don't say anything, but he senses my certainty. We have to cross the river, he says. He starts to cross. Are you crazy, I ask? I can't swim. Of course you can't, Michael says. None of us can. But it's it's not too deep, Michael says. He grabs my hand, and we start to cross slowly. The rocks are slippery. All of us are scared, holding hands as we cross the river. This looks really familiar, I say. Michael, I think I used to live here. He smiles, and I realize that he knows. You knew all this time, and you didn't tell me. We all knew you didn't grow up in the compounds. You came here when you were 10 years old. But why didn't I remember anything? We don't know. But when the time came, you did remember something. Now let's keep going. But the river, the river is behind us, Michael says. It's time to let go. I look back at the river and I remember something I used to hear, something my father used to tell me about the good path and the right path, doing the right thing. Michael laughs. We all know something in your dream is haunting you, but we can't change the past. We can only walk forward. That was only a dream. This is real. I take Michael's hand and we walk into a new world, wondering if we're dreaming for a moment.